Martin, thank you very much for agreeing to be interviewed for LexDep. Uh, if we could first start by perhaps giving us a summary of your career to date and what your current role is at Quinn. Okay, I started as uh, an article clerk, so before they were trainees, I started as article clerk at McKenna's. And just before the merger with Cameron's, I um, thought I was probably going to give up the law. Um, in fact, uh, joined a colleague of mine from university at Olswang, which was then 18 partners, um, with a view to helping to sort of grow the, the, the commercial litigation. Stayed there for 15 years, found myself uh, head of litigation on the board when Quinn's started um, calling, and then moved to Quinn's as uh, one of the partners here. So you've obviously made a lateral move yourself. Yep. Uh, what, what benefits would you say you've personally gained from making a lateral move? I think, I think you get a, a new lease of life with, with, with a move. Um, and I think that just helps uh, full stop. Plus, uh, I was able to carry on a lot of the work I was doing, some sort of high-end commercial disputes for media clients, but also with the sort of the Quinn name, the Quinn badge, also do a wider element of the, the commercial work as well. So sort of expand the variety. So there was a sort of, you know, a sort of cultural benefit of just you know, enthusing over doing something new, plus the ability to expand a practice. So you came over as a, as a partner, obviously. Yep. Um, but as an associate who's perhaps thinking about a lateral career move, when would you say is the best point in their career to do so? Uh, I, think it's, well, I think it's probably different for different people. Um, because some people get to the point where they really do need to move at different stages of their career. Um, often if, it, I suppose it's, it's rarer on qualification because people often want to settle down for a few years. Certainly after a few years, people then start thinking of a move, especially if they're finding themselves stuck in, a, not necessarily a rut, but if you are a litigator and you are associate number seven on a big dispute, and you're just doing disclosure. I think that often triggers a desire to maybe think of a change then. But again, later on in career, you may be thinking of, you're not, you're not a partner, but you maybe want one move before you want to get a partnership at a firm, and it's that firm you want to be a partner forever. So you may be more qualified, you may be five, six years qualified. So I think it is different for people. I don't think there's a bad time, as long as for you it's, a, it's the right time. So when, when you were approached by Quinn or thinking about Quinn, uh, I'm sure it was a difficult decision, uh, having been at Oldswang for a number yep. of years. What was your biggest fear about coming to a, a smaller practice? It, it wasn't the smaller practice. Actually, I, I quite liked that because um, I liked the idea of doing the best pol quality litigation you could do, but not in some enormous office block in London. So that combination of a, a smaller, more sort of intimate, in some ways friendly, which you may not think Quinn's is, but it, it is that sort of combination of that plus the quality of work was a real attraction. The nervousness, I suppose, what well, one doing anything new, uh, it's always you know, a worry, but then again, that's why it's quite exciting. Two, the worry, especially where, where you're a litigation only firm, of where's the work going to come from. You know, and I think there's still people who think, well, litigation only firms do they work? I think you know, Quinn's and others prove they do. But there's always a worry that, will my clients follow? Will the work flow? Um, and uh, will I be able to not only sort of translate my practice, but have a better practice here without a corporate department, without a commercial department? The answer is yes, but you know, that, was a, that, was a big, that was a big fear, I think. So now, now that you're on uh, Quinn's recruitment panel yourself yep. uh, with a number of the other partners, what sort of profile most impresses you what sort of what, what stands out when you when you're reviewing a CV? You know, there's a baseline of like I think any quality firm, we want good good academics, a good track record. Um, but I think most people who will be looking to apply will sort of have that in any case. We certainly want um, an enthusiasm for for being a litigator. Um, I think some people say you're either a litigator or you're not. People sort of often really enjoy that element of it. Um, and in interview, uh, people who also get the idea of wanting to help grow a practice. We're not a, a practice where um, people can sort of sit in the background and sort of muddle along quietly. I think everyone has a role to play here. And I think those people who don't want to be associate number seven or eight, who do actually want to play a material role and have got the enthusiasm and drive to do it, 
that's what we're, we're looking for. Of course, there are big cases and people won't be the only associates and you'll be the only associate on one case and in a team on others, but the ones who really want to play a meaningful role and sort of show that drive to do it, they're the, one, they're the ones, I think. Uh, you've, you've recently been nominated as partner responsible for associate wellbeing yep. here. Uh, how, how do you go about finding out what people are thinking, associate morale, whether they're happy or not happy about work allocation? Yep. Well, um, we started it because there's no doubt that you know, the quality of the work here is absolutely fantastic. You know, the, 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 so the overall package is very, very attractive. But that's not enough in the sense of if, you, if you're not happy at a place, you, you'll move on regardless of how good the work and the money is and so on because you'll think, well, the work's good enough over there and the money's good enough over there. Um, so we have spent a lot of time ensuring that this is also a great place to work. And I think that's one of the things that people think, well, it's a, you know, US firms sometimes don't get the best you know, reputation. Hard-working firms, and we are hard-working, but I think in our view that often means actually it should be a good thing that actually there's good work here, so you, you do work hard. But we try very hard to ensure that people are happy. It's not a big office, so you can't afford for people not to be um, happy. So uh, we set up quarterly meetings where people can be very honest, and also it's an environment where people are honest with each other. We encourage people to be brutally honest with us. And when new people come, we specifically ask them their first impressions. What are we doing right? Because you know, they will say, you know what was a bit weird when I started was this, you know, at my old firm we did this. And you go, oh, that's a good idea, so we, we adopt that. Or what you do well, they think, compared to my old firm, is this. And so we try and improve that. So we do get together in this room, all talk about the good things and the bad things. Some people think that's a bit nervous talking about this, but actually as soon as one person starts, actually everyone goes, oh, that's true. And another thing we could do better is X, Y. So it's an open, open environment. Talk about it. Some people don't want to talk about it together. They prefer to come and have a chat, and they can come and have a chat to me or other partners. And it's sort of this, no one's perfect. We try to ensure we get better and better. And it's part of that drive, which is not the, the quality of the work, it's not the formal appraisal process. It's trying to ensure that people just quite like being here as well. And we think that, think that works and I think it helps. And, and on the formal, process, uh, formal appraisal yep. process, how does that work here? Because uh, at some of the larger firms, it's very structured. You have to, uh, as, as an associate, type out your own yep. self-assessment and then you go and see what your what your sort of the, the partner that you you work with most says, and, and sometimes that form's not done, it gets yep. left six months. Uh, do you have a structured process? So it's um, probably this is a good example of what we are like as a whole. It is structured, but but it's not inflexible. It's certainly not bureaucratic. We have one now. It used to be two, but we've gone to one main formal uh, appraisal a year. Again, because we're not seventy partners in a, a huge group, we come sit down as a group of partners and exchange views about the associates so that you pull in all the views. You're not just getting the views of the person who's appraising you. Um, and so you pull those views. Um, we ensure, therefore, we've got a good uh, cross-section of opinions. Then it'll be two or three partners who sit down with the um, associate. Uh, we go through with it, also with Alice, who's head of HR and office manager. And um, a little note is then done of that afterwards, which includes trying to work out areas for improvement, a two-way process, you know, where, where, what would they like to do, what work do they want to get more involved in. So there is that formal element, but it's not a, there's no huge form uh, to fill out, uh, partly because you know, I, I've lived a previous life where we've had those huge forms. It takes ages to fill out. There's all these sort of grading things which actually are very imprecise in that sense, and they're sort of it's not really nuanced. Actually, if you talk about it honestly at an appraisal, that's what we try and do. Um, but it doesn't also rule out the, the need for people to have an exchange in between that, um, talk about what's going right, honest feedback. Um, and it works both ways, you know, with people being encouraged to talk to us as well. So you don't actually give a formal grade? So no. Nope. Associates won't be talking in the I got 3.5 average, I got a four. No, we, we try and honestly say where things are going really, really well. Uh, where there is room for improvement, plus where that person wants to go, as well as, you know, I've not worked with these partners, and so we try and take that on board and ensure they get exposure to that partner and that type of work as well. So it's a, it's a sort of, not, it's not 360 in that sort of sense of appraisal, but it's, it's a sort of 
a, a mutual discussion, but it's, it's not specifically graded, but it is honest of how people are doing and where they're going right and where we think they could improve and where we can improve. How, how many associates are you currently working with and, and what sort of work is, are each of those associates doing? If you can give, give me an idea of, uh, sort of what PQE level yeah. each, each one of those are. Um, Okay, so PQE range is not long qualified up to seven, eight year qualified. How many? I'm not sure off the top of my head. I would say six, seven, eight, some to varying degrees. Uh, I have one case where there's three associates who work a huge amount with me on that case. It's a, it's a, it's a large case and they, are, they range from sort of three to six or seven years. We had a, um, another fantastic case, which is still ongoing, which involved near enough newly qualified and an of counsel uh, as well, because we thought that was the correct structure uh, there. And um, so a, a wide variety. I'm not currently working with every associate at the moment here, but I've worked with every single associate. And we don't have formal teams where you only work with certain people. Um, so it, it's, it's a more, again, a more flexible, so a wide range at any one time. Legal Business has named you as one of the 10 lawyers to visit in the time of crisis. That was a while crisis. ago. That was a while. But it's still yeah. on your yeah, Quinn profile is, it on is, the website. It is, I know. <laughs> yes, it sounds good, definitely. And so. it sounds like Jeremy Clarkson came and reached out to you yeah. last year. Um, what's been the most exciting case that you've worked on? Can I, can I say, do I have to say one case? Because actually what, what I've enjoyed most, sorry to not answer your question, but what I've enjoyed most is, um, the variety, and that's what I, I like. I don't want to, and I think this is a feature here, I, I don't want to just do finance disputes. I don't want to just do judicial review. I don't want to just do, and I think that's, sort of, that's the thing that I think sometimes kills enthusiasm. What I've liked in the last year, to give you an example, so I did that. I did um, acting for uh, wealthy African individual plus conglomerates which had disputes across Africa, BVI, ICC arbitration in France, acting in uh, large financial uh, anti-bank matter, uh, also doing copyright tribunal work and evaluation of royalties and a commercial court case for one of the largest uh, commercial broadcasters um, in the last year. And it's that variety which um, is what I like most um, and I view myself as a, a commercial litigator, but again, at Quinn's, we don't have a team that does the finance litigation, the insolvency. We, we, we are, have a broader base, and that is what I like. Uh, and that, therefore, gets reflected, I think, amongst the associates. They will have a, a range of work and, and won't get pigeonholed. If I'm a two-year PQE associate, uh, it's getting great appraisals every yep. year. I'm at a top-tier UK firm, I'm adding the largest most high profile cases to my CV, what would you say to me to make me want to even consider coming to Quinn? Um, there's a good possibility that if you are at one of these wonderful Magic Circle firms, and they are excellent, um, at, you, at two years qualified, your role may not be a, a particularly material role. It will be a very valuable role. What we try and do is give people the ability to have very real, um, Richard will talk about this as well, very, very real responsibility early on. Um, if people are good enough that we want them to have exposure early on, uh, and um, we don't have people who are associate number six or seven, any, everybody, even on a slightly larger team, will have a very key role to play. Now that takes a particular person in the sense that it, it, it's, if people aren't ready and comfortable for that, and need a few more years, it may be a bit early. If people are enthusiastic to um, join a place where they will get real responsibility and is growing and is expanding um, and is litigation focused, uh, there aren't really any better places to be. It's, it's a nice combination for someone who's got a lot of career ahead of them and wants to sort of use it to their full advantage. If you could use three words to define the culture here, what would you, what would you use? I do think it's relaxed in some ways. The, the environment is relaxed. You can be relaxed. You're, everyone's treated as, as an adult. You don't have to conform it in that sense. Um, but then 
it's not a word, but not relaxed. We're, we're very focused, very focused on the quality of the work and doing it well and being that leading litigation practice. So, which sounds as if relaxed and focused don't really go together, but I think they, they do. You can afford to be very focused on achieving that top tier litigation practice, but do it in a environment that can be more uh, relaxed in that sense. Um, then therefore, I suppose, different in the sense of there are other firms which are relaxed, there are other firms that are very, very driven. It's quite difficult to try and get that happy balance between the two, and that makes us a bit different. Finally, where do you see Quinn uh, in 10 years' time? Um, the plan always has been, and it was you know, you know, said to me when I joined here, and we still say to people now, it's, it's to be the top tier litigation practice, to be the, in many ways, the obvious choice for your board level dispute. So uh, if in 10 years time, uh, major corporates have a dispute, the, the issue has to be them going, do we use our, our, our normal lawyers? Or is this really something we really should bring Quinns in for? That's where we've got to be. Now, we were not on the map eight years ago. We're now very much on the map. The next 10 years is to be that automatic choice. Either, either people would automatically use us, or if they've got other lawyers already in place, we want to ensure that the, the, the other choice is, well, actually, I think this is probably right, let's bring in Quinns. That's why I think, you know, that's the 10-year plan. Martin, thanks very much for your time. No trouble, thank you.